Has your children's bad behavior ever totally embarrassed you or made you wonder where you went wrong as a mother? Well, welcome to the club. The truth is it happens to all of us at some time or another and often it happens a lot of times. You just might not see it. But that's why today I wanted to share with you eight things that you can do when your kid's constant bad behavior is driving you crazy. Now, to clarify, when I say your kid's constant bad behavior, I am not talking about kids who are getting in legal trouble, who are destroying other people's property, who are killing small animals. I'm not talking about kids who perhaps would be better suited with seeing a um, professional counselor who could help them with deep-seated underlying issues. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Today, I am just talking about your kids who are generally really sweet, kind, wonderful kids that you love and adore, but there's something that they're doing that is not a good behavior for them to be doing that you need to find a way to get them to stop this behavior. Now, if you have little kids, it may be something as simple as hitting or biting, um, maybe stealing other people's toys, or throwing temper tantrums, something like that that's fairly normal, um, but you really need to stop it before it you know, gets even worse. Or if you have an older kid, it could be something like lying, having an attitude, um, refusing to clean up the room constantly, you know, whatever it is, getting in trouble at school, something that is pretty normal that parents deal with, um, but we need to find a way to nip it in the bud because it's driving you crazy. Um, it's not good for them. You don't want them to grow up this way. Um, so that's what we're talking about today, just to be clear. I did also want to mention as well that if this is something that you were like, yes, I cannot wait to hear what you have to say in this area because I need so much help with this. I do have a book as well called Teach Your Children How to Behave. And it goes through my whole step-by-step, -step, very in-depth, um, ideas and guide for how you deal with behaviors like these um, if you're seeing these kind of behaviors in your children on a regular basis. So if this is something that you really deal with, I would love for you to check out this book because it's really going to go much more in depth and help you um, with those kinds of behaviors. But today I just wanted to share eight quick tips or basically mindsets um, for you to keep in mind as you are dealing with this. So if there's one specific behavior that you are like, I don't know what to do with this kid because they're not listening to me or they're doing this thing that's not good for them to be doing, that hopefully this will help you out with just a few quick tips. So let's go ahead and dive into the first one. The first thing I want you to do when your kid's behavior is driving you crazy is number one, realize that it is normal. So Again, like I've said before, we're not talking about kids who are burning property or like malicious kids who are, you know, intent to go destroy things. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about normal kids. So every parent in the world deals with these things on occasion. Um, Sometimes, a lot of the times, it is totally normal. If your kids are acting up, even if it's the same thing they're doing constantly and you cannot get them to stop, it does not mean that you are a bad mom. You are probably doing a fine job but it is normal. Kids are not perfect. They come out um, when they are born. They're not perfect. They don't know all the rules of how to behave in a society. They just don't know yet. They have to be taught these things. So kids are going to make a lot of mistakes. They're going to learn things the hard way, and there's some things you're really going to have to work with them on in order to teach them. So if your kids are acting up, you don't need to take it personally. It's not that you're a bad mom. You don't need to feel like a failure. It is likely totally normal. All kids deal with this. My kids uh, drive me crazy sometimes. Um, every other mom that I know that I've ever talked to, even the moms who totally love their kids, which we all do, um, but all of us moms, sometimes our kids do things that we're like, please stop doing that. So it's not just you. It's okay. It's normal. It's part of parenting and it's okay. So the second thing that I want you to keep in mind is number two, remember your role. So like I said a minute ago, how kids come out of the womb, they're not perfect, they have to learn things. Well, I want you to keep in mind also your role as a parent. Your role is not to get your parent, your children to obey you. Now, I know that sounds crazy because as parents were like, yeah, they have to obey me and they do, but that's not your primary role is to lay down the law and get your kids, you must listen to me or else. Um, you're not the dictator. Yes, you are in God-given authority over them, but it's not your primary role of you must listen to me. Um, the way that I think about this in my house that works 
really well for helping me keep my sanity is that I am my parents or my children's, I am my children's guide, I'm my children's teacher, and I'm their mother, but I'm and I am the boss of them. I do get to tell them what to do, but it's not my primary role to say, you must listen to me. My primary role is to teach my children how to behave, hence why I have a book on this. Um, it's in the show notes, definitely check that out. But my primary role as a parent is to teach my children and to lead my children and to guide my children, to model for my children. This is what it means to be a Christian grown up. This is what it means, this is what it looks like to live in this world. It doesn't mean I'm always gonna do it perfectly, I don't expect them to do it always perfectly, and honestly, I don't even expect my children to listen to me the first time all the time. I would like it if they did, but I am not trying to be a dictator where I'm like, you have to listen to me because I said so. I do say because I said so sometimes, but overall, um, I hope this is making sense. My main role that I see as a parent is to lead them and to guide them and to model for them and to teach them. So I am more concerned with teaching my kids how to make good behavior rather than saying, you need to do this because I said so. Um, or say, okay, here is how we love each other. Let me show you what that looks like. Let me tell you what that looks like. Let me guide you and instruct you on how to do that. Um, not, oh, well, you have to stop doing this because I said so and, and I'm laying down the law. And again, I hope that makes sense. But if you really step back and you stop taking, not that you stop taking ownership, but you step back and you say, okay, I do not have to feel like a terrible person because my kid doesn't always listen because they're not always going to listen. I am responsible for them and how they turn out but they are an individual on their own. They're not just a reflection of me, but this is an actual human being, their own human being who has wants and needs and desires. So instead of me trying to see my kids as here's a reflection of me and you need to do what I say and what I want, to say, okay, here is another separate God made individual, God made this person, and it's my job to lead them and guide them and teach them. And that's gonna take time. That's not something that they're gonna get right away. Um, if they mess up, it doesn't mean automatically that I messed up. It means that they're human and I'm human and we're figuring this out together. So I've just really found for myself that when I take a step back and I say, okay, I don't have to, hey, listen to me, I'm the boss, do what I say every minute, but I can just be like, you know what, you're a human and I'm gonna help you and I'm gonna teach you and I'm gonna lead you and I'm gonna guide you and I'm gonna model for you. Um, and I have that sense of responsibility of I want to do my job well, but then they're also a, their own separate human being who's going to make good behavior and bad behavior choices of their own as well. That just really takes a lot of the load and stress off. Not that you don't care because you do, but just to kind of keep that better perspective of they are a human being as well. And I have my job to do my best and then they have their job and we work together rather than me having 100% of the responsibility for all of it because they're human. They are responsible at some point for what they do as well. So, okay, let's dive then into number three, which is set clear expectations. So basically this is their role. So a minute ago I talked about, okay, here, well, here's what's my role. At this point, we wanna talk about what their role is. So as your children, their role is basically, yes, to listen to you, um, but also to become great people. Um, I tell my kids, and this is honestly a conversation that I have with them all the time, all the time before we go anywhere, before we do anything new, I will set out um, very clearly, okay, here are my expectations for you. Here is how I want you to behave. Here is what I expect of you. Um, here's what you need to do so that they know. Because how I said earlier, your kids coming out of the womb don't know how to behave in a library. They don't know how to behave at church. They don't know how to do these things. And even if you've told them 50 million times, that doesn't mean it's sunk into the point where they really know and understand this is what I should be doing and why. So it is so helpful if before you do anything new, you sit them down and you say, okay, here are my expectations. Here is what I want from you. So case in point, before I started this video, my kids are actually home now. I usually try not to record when they're home, um, but tech issues this week it just led to it happening this way. So they are home. So before I started this recording, I didn't just like wait until maybe they were quiet for a minute and then go in the other room and hope I could record real quick and hope that they behaved. I talked to them 
And I said, okay, here is what I expect from you. Here is what you will do, and here is what you won't do. And if this is a spiel that you've given them before and they should know, then you can ask them, okay, you tell me before we go in the library, before we go in church, do you do this? Do you not do this? So that they know and it's clear and they have that reminder um, because it's – the worst feeling when you yell at a kid and you're like, why did you do this thing? You were so terrible. You were so like, hopefully you wouldn't like be really rude and mean and put them down. But you know, you were so naughty in church today. Why would you do that? When they were like, I had no idea that I wasn't allowed to behave that way. Um, so setting those clear expectations up front lets them know, okay, here's what I need to do because they might not know um, and then it's a good reminder for them and then you're on the same page so then when you're in that situation you don't have to go into all the things you can just give them a look because they know what they're supposed to do and you know what they're supposed to do so oftentimes a look is enough so I just feel like that's one of the steps that I'll, sometimes parents miss that for me and our family makes a huge huge difference if you tell them up front okay here is what I expect from you, here's what you're going to do, here's what you're not going to do. So everybody is on the same page of what counts as good behavior and what doesn't. All right, next tip, number four, is set logical consequences. So in this same discussion, before you were getting ready to do whatever it is you're going to do, um, Yes, tell them what you expect them to do, but also tell them what is going to happen up front. So rather than hoping your kids are good and then when they're not being like, oh no, now I have to like figure out how I'm going to punish them and I don't want to punish them and I don't want to do these things, or you're telling your child, oh, well, you were naughty, so we have to leave now, and they're throwing a huge meltdown because they don't want to leave, a lot of that can be avoided if you tell them up front. So rather than waiting until that minute, when you're still in the car, when you are still wherever you are going, you pulled in the parking lot, you're driving, whatever, um, before you get there, for you to say, okay, here's how we behave at the library, here's how we behave at a friend's house, here's how we behave you know, at the pool, wherever you're going. Okay, here's what you're going to do, and here's what you're not going to do, and there are consequences for actions. The, this is a conversation that I have with my kids all the time. Um, life has consequences. Things that you do have consequences. If you make good choices, you get good consequences. And if you make bad choices, you get bad consequences. And not because I'm a terrible mom who's so mean and I'm trying to just punish you and be like, oh, you did this thing, so now I'm good. No, it's life has consequences. Even for grownups, life has consequences. If I don't pay my taxes, there's a consequence for that. If I drive like a maniac on the street and hit a pedestrian, there's a consequence for that. So setting kids up to understand that as children on a small scale um, is just so helpful for them for their development to understand life has consequences. Um, and I generally try to make the consequence just a really natural consequence, something that really fits well. So for example, um, let me just think of a few examples off the top of my head. If my son is giving me an attitude and he's talking to me in a really rude way, then he knows he will lose his talking privileges. If he can't use his voice nicely, he doesn't need to use his voice at all because he has the right he is his own person, his own individual. He has the right to say whatever he wants, but I don't have I have the right to not listen to it. So if he comes home from school and he is super rude and telling me all these things, okay, I have the right. I don't have to listen to that because I am my own separate individual and I have the right to not hear that. So he can go in his room. If he wants to mutter under his breath, honestly, I don't really care because he can go be miserable by himself, but I have the right as an individual to not hear those things. So if we're in the car, he loses his talking privileges. He just doesn't get to talk for the rest of the ride home. Or if we're home, you can go in your room and you can go be grouchy over there because I don't have to listen to it. And again, it's not a taking it personally thing. It's not a punishment thing. I'm not trying to be like, oh, how could you? And so now like I'm mad at you. It's just like, you know what? If you're gonna be that way, I don't have to listen to it. And it's just so much stress off my plate to be like, you know what? You're a human. You can make that choice, but you're going to make it over there because I don't have to listen to it. Um, another example, say if your kid is hitting someone or biting someone. Okay, well, if you're not being a good friend, if you're not playing well, then you don't need to play well with other people. And again, you can go sit in your room. You cannot have that toy anymore. Um, my kids know... Like if they're fighting over a toy, I tell them you have three seconds to figure it out or neither one of you will have this toy because your relationship with your brother is more important than whatever like dollar store toy that you're fighting over. So you can decide, will you figure out how you're going to share it nicely or nobody's going to have it. And again, it doesn't have to be this whole emotional thing from me and I am pretty detached from it because 
I know they're humans. They have a choice. They get to decide because they are humans. They get to decide what their actions will be. And they are the ones who are deciding the consequences that I've set up front in advance. And my kids don't generally throw a big fuss or a fit when I give them consequences because they already know what they're going to be. And so if they're getting the consequence, it's because they have chosen, they have made the choice, and I make it clear to them, okay, you chose to behave this way. You chose to have this consequence. Um, and because I follow through very consistently, like my kids know this is what's happening. So next thing I wanted to share with you is number five, stay consistent. Like what I was talking about a minute ago. My kids don't really fuss and fight over consequences too much because they know if mom says, hey, neither one of you is going to get that toy, they know that I mean it. If I say this is what's going to happen, then this is what's going to happen. So they don't wait and get the consequence and fuss and fight later because they know. Um, and there's you know various rules in our house that we implement enough that they'll tell each other now, like, hey, if you don't clean up your room, mom's gonna take your toys away. And I do, because if you don't, if you, like as your own person with your own room, if you take care of your things, you have them, if you don't want them and you're just gonna stomp all over them and leave them out, if you have so many toys that you can't take care of them, then you have too many toys. So I will just help you out and I will take them out of your room. Um, and depending on the quality of the toy, it might go in the trash or it might just go in storage or wherever. Um, but it's just all like real life consequences, but on a smaller scale that would be appropriate for children. And my kids know, if I don't take care of my toys, then I don't have toys. Like that's a grown up thing too. If grown ups don't take care of their car, they don't have a car anymore. So there's no reason why a child couldn't learn that as well. If I don't take care of my toys, I don't have toys anymore. So they have their choice and they know that I'm going to follow through every time because it's not this big stressful thing. They're a human, they had their choice, they made their choice and all I'm doing is helping them um, and teaching them, okay, actions that you do have consequences and helping to facilitate that process of teaching them. I'm not getting mad at them. I, well, I try not to get too mad. I'm human as well. But, you know, it's not this punishment thing. It's just like, okay, here's the, here's what I expect of you. If you do this, you get this. If you do this, you do this. And that's just something that grownups do. So children can do that as well. Even little children can learn that thing as well. So you want to stay consistent. Does that mean that you have to every single time always? No. Um, there's going to be times where you can be more sympathetic if you know like they missed a nap time today and they are so tired. Okay. They missed a nap time. They're not really... Um, they're just tired. Like, that's okay to give them a break or, oh, you know, this other thing happened or it's a really stressful week this week for some reason. It's totally fine to give them grace. That's awesome. But in general, you're being consistent in terms of, okay, this is what I say is going to happen. Um, you're ha keeping the same rules every day. Um, you're not like, oh, this day you can run through the house and this other day though, you're going to get in big trouble for that. So generally, okay, here are the rules that we abide by pretty much every single day. They have the same consequences. So the kids aren't surprised. They know. Um, and even with my kids, when I'm giving one of them consequences, the other two are like, well, you know, like this is how it is. This is how it is every day. Like if you do this, they'll tell them ahead of time. They'll be like, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. And afterwards, when one of them is crying because they got the consequence the other two are like don't cry like you know this is what happens um so it's not a surprise it's not stressful and drama it's just like if you don't play with your toys you don't have your toys if you don't play nicely with your brother you don't get to play with your brother um and it just keeps things so much calmer um because everybody knows what to expect not drama you just do what you do so as I said, though, being consistent means you're going to do that on a general basis regularly, but there are times when you're not going to be consistent and that's okay, which leads me to my next point. Number six is don't be afraid to pivot. So I know I said you want to be consistent and you want to say, okay, here is your expectation and here is your consequence and we're going to do things the same way all the time because it just makes things so much easier on ourselves and we want to do that in general. However, if something is not working, it is okay to change things. If you made a rule and you can see, hey, that rule is not working out, it's totally fine to say, okay, new rule. We're going to do things differently because that wasn't really working. Um, and kids can understand that, that sometimes we make choices and they're not the best choices. And that's okay because we're just all doing our best. Like my kids know, like I am their mom who makes rules for them, but I'm not, like I'm not God. I'm not 
it's not like I know everything. I am learning and they are learning and we're learning together. And I've had these conversations with my kids before where I say, you know what? You're nine years old. You've never been nine years old before. Like you're learning what nine-year-olds need to learn. And you know what? I've never been the nine uh, mother of a nine-year-old boy before. Like this is new to me. I'm learning how to be a mom of a nine-year-old boy because I've never done that before. So we are learning together. So just to take the attitude of we are doing this together. We are learning this. So sometimes you might make a rule and it doesn't work out and it causes more problems than it's worth. That's okay. You can just say, hey, I know we made this rule, but it wasn't really the best rule. It's not really working out. Let's kind of revisit that. Let's do something else instead. Um, and we did this in my own family. A recent example was during the school year when the kids get in the car. If one of them sits in the seat that's right where they get in and then the other one has to like crawl over them to get to the back. Um, and it was just this whole debacle of who's the, going to be the one that has to close the car door, which is, nobody cares, but it was a whole debacle. Who has to close the car door? The last person who got in or the person who was sitting in the seat. So I made the rule one way of like, okay, whoever gets in first has to go to the back or something, I think was the rule. And for some reason, I don't even remember now, but it didn't work. It caused more fighting and drama. Um, so like after a day, I was like, nope, just kidding. And we made that not a rule before anymore. And you can do that as well. You can say, okay, here's what we're going to try. It doesn't have to be set in stone, but you can have these discussions with your kids where you say, okay, I have never been the mom of a nine-year-old boy before. Or I've never been the mom of a six-year-old girl before. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to learn this together. Here's what I want to have happen. Um, here's our goal here and here is our consequence. But if it doesn't work, we're learning. We're learning together. Like we are both human individuals who are not perfect. We make mistakes and that's okay. But we are going to, um, we're going to try this. We're going to see if it works. And my kids know also as well, like you have your consequences. If those consequences don't work, I will give you more consequences because they know the reason why they get consequences isn't because mom's mad at them. It isn't because I'm trying to punish them. It's because, okay, I, and I've had this conversation with my kids lots of times. My kids know my job as your mom is to help you to grow up, to become a wonderful human being who loves God and loves others. That is what is important to me. That is my job. I'm not responsible for all of your choices, but my job is to do the best that I can to teach you how to do these things. Your job is to learn how to do these things. You are not the boss. You are not in charge. When you are a parent, and when you know all of these things, then you can teach your kid. But for now, we're going to do our best. Um, so that's just kind of the conversations that I'm having with them. Okay, this is my my job to get you to get this. Um, and if this isn't working, we're going to try something else. And if this consequence isn't going to work, we're going to find some more consequences. And they know like, hey, I'm giving you a nice consequence now. And if that's not working, we're going to find more serious consequences. Do you want more serious consequence or do you want to just listen? And a lot of times they know I'm serious because I have the same conversations with them however often I need to. So they're like, okay, we know we're going to listen with the nice consequence so that we don't have to have this horrible mean consequence that we don't want. Perfect. Awesome. It works. Um, but if it doesn't, more consequences, whatever it takes, because I know my job and they know their job. They know what I expect of them. Um, and this is just how it's going to work. So that works out really well in my family. If it doesn't work, find something else. If that consequence doesn't work, find more. You can have as many consequences as you want, whatever it takes so that I can do my job and you can do your job. That's what we're going to do. All right, the next thing that I wanna talk about is number seven, get to the heart of the issue. So up until now, I have talked in a really pretty straightforward manner of you set expectations, you set consequences, this is what happens. And for a lot of behaviors, especially behaviors with littler kids, it's really that straightforward a lot of times. Here is what is, you know, here's what I expect. Here's what's going to happen if you don't do it. Um, and we're going to follow through consistently because kids just need to learn actions have consequences. And if I make this decision, this is what's going to happen. And adults, we do the same thing. If I am rude to my husband, I know what's going to happen. If I am super sweet to my husband, I know what's going to happen. This is a principle we use all through life. So we're just teaching it to them as children. However, if there is something deeper going on, if you suspect or if you know for sure something deeper is going on, it is totally fine to take a step back and kind of reevaluate. Um, you would still use the same kind of process of setting expectations, figuring out consequences, good or bad either way. Um, 
but you can infuse so much grace in this step if you think that there is something going on. So to give an example, one of my children had a terrible attitude a few months back, whenever it was, um, and just was so mean and rude. And he's like, he's a sweet, wonderful child, um, but just something was going on. So I could have just very simply said, okay, you're gonna be nice, and if you don't, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, here are your consequences and I'll give you more consequences and the whole shebang. But I knew, wait, there's something going on. And if there's something, if the behavior is really a symptom of something, if it isn't really the behavior, that's the problem, but there's something going on that's causing the behavior, then it doesn't help to just address the behavior. If there's something deeper that's going on, you really need to go in and figure out, okay, what is going on really underneath the surface and addressing that. So sometimes that means the consequences, um, not consequences, again, the way I use it here at this house, consequences don't always have to be a punishment it doesn't have to be a bad thing but the consequence could be hey if you are being really rude and having a rough time maybe the consequence is you need to come sit and snuggle with mom and have a talk and like let's figure out what's going on and try to get to the root of the issue and mom's gonna ask you a lot of questions um, and mom's gonna say do you think this way do you think this way like why are you doing this and like do you believe this and um, how I've talked a lot on equipping godly women about taking every thought captive to Christ kids don't know how to do that yet so if they have some lies or some hurts or things in their brain that they can't process that yet when they're little they don't know like oh this person hurt me this person made me mad so now I'm acting out they don't know how to do that yet so it might be sitting down with them and helping them through that process. Okay, what's going on? Why are you mad at your brother? Do you want your brother to be hurt? Do you, you know, do you want him to not have a toy? Like, why are you doing this? Um, and the more you can kind of just talk to them, if you have that good relationship with them, um, to talk to them, then they will hopefully kind of eventually start opening up and spilling things out and then you can get to the root of the issue like oh of course your brother doesn't hate you or of course he's not really mad at you or you know this happened or well of course this is why he was rude to you because you were rude to him first and that's a natural consequence that just happens in life if you want people to like you then be a likable person and you can kind of get in there and like figure out and sort through okay what's going on in their head what are these thoughts um and getting to the root of the issue because just simply only addressing the symptom, the behavior isn't going to work if, um, sometimes it will, but a lot of times isn't going to work if there's something deeper going on. So that's another thing I wanted to point out as well. Yes, say expectations. Yes, say consequences. Yes, follow through. But make sure that your consequences are really fitting what's really going on. Um, so you're not just addressing the behavior, but you're really addressing the child. Because remember, again, your job is not just to, you have to obey. You have to follow these expectations and you will listen or else. Your job is, okay is to model and to teach and to guide. So if there's something going on, okay, hey, what's going on? Let's talk about this. Let's get it out. Let's fix any lies you might be believing. Let's fix any hurts that you might have um, to kind of guide them into their grown-up person that they're becoming um, and to kind of guide them on that way. So that's a really important thing too. Um, and a lot of times you'll notice that if you start by setting normal consequences and it's not working and it's something that's been going on for a long time um, and you can't seem to break, maybe there's something deeper that's going on and you really need to dig into what that is. Or even if you just know that there's something going on, like your kid who is normally wonderful and sweet and kind, um, but they are super just mean and grouchy one day, but you know that they got a bad grade on the test. Well, you can just know, okay, that's probably what happened. And that's going to affect what kind of consequences you give them. So that's something you're going to want to take into consideration too. And then finally, the last thing on our list, number eight, is don't forget to follow up. So throughout this podcast episode, I've been giving you lots of things that you can do. Lots of, okay, do this step, um, set the expectations, set the consequence, give, you know, give more consequences if needed get to the root of the issue these are all things that you can do but you also want to have this relationship with your child where you are following up and making sure that they are understanding this process too because yes it is helpful for you but it's even way more helpful if your kids know exactly what you are doing this is not some secret like behind the scenes thing that you're like I'm gonna try out this new parenting method and like they're not gonna know what hit them not like that at all this is some it's a process that you're going to guide your kids through that they can 100 percent know what you're doing and you're going to work on it together because it's based on principles that grown-ups use in real life that kids need to learn as well um so i have so many conversations with my kids and i've shared some of them already 
um, in this podcast episode, but that is a huge part of what I do is that I'm not just handing out consequences, but we're having these discussions. I'm talking with my kids to tell them, okay, here's my role as your mom. My role is to guide you and teach you and help you learn and to model for you and to show you what this looks like. My job is to help you to grow up to become this wonderful person. And I will tell them, hey, right now, the things you are doing, that's what bullies do. Do you want to grow up to be a bully or do you want to grow up to be a wonderful human being? Okay, if you want to grow up to be a wonderful human being, I'm your mom. That's my job is to teach you and to show you how to do these things. This is why I'm on your case. This is why I am telling you. Um, this is why I'm giving you consequence. Not because I mean, not because I you know, don't love you. It's because my job is to help you grow up right. And your job is to learn these things. And someday you'll be the grown up and you'll get to do this with your kids. But right now you're learning. So my job is to help you learn so that they understand. And I'll have these conversations as a follow up right after they get into trouble. Like if they go to their room and they're in their room for a while, I will come in and I'll say, you know that I love you, right? You know what's my job. And I drill it into my head, into their heads so much that they know, okay, what's my job? And this is why. And so usually by the time that we're walking out of their room together, they're not, I mean, sometimes they're mad at me because we're all human. Um, but most of the time they're not mad at me. They're coming out laughing and smiling, which sounds ridiculous, but it's true because they've gotten their consequence. But then I'm going in there afterwards to follow up, to hug them and snuggle them and say, okay, let's talk about this. What is my job? What is your job? Okay, this is the choice that you made. Is this a good choice? And I will ask them questions. Was it a good choice? Or no, the first thing I will ask them, what did you do that was wrong? And they know, like my kids, as soon as they go in their room, like they're ready to give this answer because they have to do it all the time. What did you do that was wrong? Okay, this is what I did that was wrong. Why was it wrong? And they need to be able to tell me those two things. What did you do that was wrong? Why was it wrong? And if they don't know, that they didn't learn their lesson. Because that's the whole point is not just they got their consequence. The whole point is that they learned their lesson. So I'll go in there. What did you do? Why was it wrong? What is your lesson? What are you going to do differently next time? Those are the three big things I want them to be able to tell me. What did you do? Why was it wrong? What are you going to do next time? Or what could you have done instead? So if they are understanding these things, it's not just, oh, they did something wrong. They got their consequences. Oh, they learned a lesson. Now they know for next time. And if we have to do this lots of times, we'll do it lots of times. We'll try different consequences if we need to. But my kids know when they come out, okay, here's what I did. Here's why it didn't work. Here's what happened. So they can tell me. So they're not walking out of the room with the mindset of, oh, my mom hates me. Oh, my mom's just always yelling at me. Oh, my mom, you know, is so mean to me. They know hey, this is what I did, this is what happened, here's how it turned out, here would be a better choice, and my mom is telling me this because she loves me and she wants me to grow up to be a wonderful, decent human being, and my job is to learn how to do these things. So they understand because we've had these follow-up conversations. It's not just a punish, get out of my face because you're driving me crazy, but it is a conversation that they know that's very transparent. Okay, this is my job, this is your job, this is how it's gonna happen. If we have to do this every day, we will do this every day and I will be here every day. Um, but this is how it is. And my kids know that, they're used to that, and it works really well in my house. So those are the eight pieces of advice or mindset that I would love to give you just off the top of my head. Here is how I discipline my kids. Here's how I help them to grow up to be wonderful human beings. Um, and they are wonderful human beings and I love them, they're adorable. Um, they make bad choices sometimes and that's just life and that's okay because um, we're all learning and growing together. So hopefully those eight things have been helpful for you to give you a little bit of mindset and perspective and some step-by-step -step instructions of how to deal with some of these behaviors that drive all of us as moms crazy. If you want more, definitely go ahead and check out the show notes. As I mentioned before, um, I have a book, Teach Your Children How to Behave, that goes through super in-depth um, for all kinds of, I think there's like 28, 30 or so different behaviors, something like that, um, that smaller children generally do that are very common. And it just goes through really specific. If your child is biting, here's how you deal with that. If your child is hitting, if your child is not cleaning their room, you know, here is exactly how I deal with that in my house. That works really well. So if that's the kind of help you need today, I would love for you to check out the show notes, check out that book. It is very helpful. Um, step by step, it'll show you just what to do. Um, and then there's other resources that are linked there for you as well that you're going to find really helpful. 
As always, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. I come back regularly to share with you my best, super practical and encouraging relevant tips and advice to help you to be the amazing Christian woman, to be the amazing Christian wife and mom that God has created you to be. And I would love to encourage you and equip you and challenge you even more. So definitely go ahead and subscribe if you have not already. Check out the show notes and I will see you back here again real soon. All right, bye.